Hi, this video is on matrix multiplication and it's on using a grid method instead of the traditional method for multiplication. So uh, hopefully at the end of this video you'll be able to multiply two matrices together using a grid method. Uh, use a grid to explain why certain types of matrices can and can't be multiplied together and use the grid to explain what the size of the resultant matrix is given that they can be multiplied together. So we'll start by looking at a uh, multiplying two two by two matrices. Um, now a traditional method for doing this is that uh, we will multiply the uh, first row by the first column, which means we get three times six uh, plus two times zero. So our first element here is gonna be 18 plus zero, which is 18. And then we're gonna do this row multiplied by uh, the second column here. So we get three times one plus two times negative two, uh, which is gonna be three uh, minus four, which is negative one. Then we're gonna do um, this one multiplied by this one here. So the second row multiplied by the first column, negative six plus five times zero, which is zero. So we get negative six. And then we'll do the second um, row multiplied by the second column, which gives us negative one uh, plus negative 10, which is negative 11. Now that's fine, um, there's nothing wrong with that and it's the way that a lot of people do it. But um, it isn't, I don't think, intuitively obvious why we're multiplying which row with which column and uh, because it's not obvious, it means it's easy to forget. This is an alternative way of writing out your working. Uh, we still have the first one here, uh, but we move the second one up uh, and we multiply it in a grid like this. So what we're going to end up with after we've multiplied them together is this row multiplied by this column gives us this first element, which I think uh, makes more sense. Um, we end up with three sixes are 18, plus two times zero is 18. Uh, we then do this row multiplied by this column, which gives us this value here. So we have three plus negative four is negative one. Uh, then we'll do this row and this column to give us this one here, as you can see, everything lines up. Negative six plus zero is negative six. And then we have this one multiplied by this one, gives us negative one minus 10 is negative 11. So you do exactly the same thing, <coughs> except you lay it out in a grid and you can see um, which bits line up together to multiply to give that um, missing element there. So I think it's 18, negative one, negative six, and uh, negative 11. It's exactly the same as before. Just a different way of laying the working out and a way that I think helps make it more obvious what it is that you multiply together. Okay, now we're not gonna multiply this one out. We're just gonna use it to um, illustrate a point. Um, if we're multiplying two matrices together, the first thing that we have to do is decide whether or not we actually can multiply them together. And the rule for whether or not we can do that is that the um, number of columns here, uh, which is three, must equal the number of rows here, which is also three. So this means this would be able to multiply uh, together. Um, if we have an M by N matrix, which is this one here, uh, where we have um, two by three, and a P by Q matrix here, which is three by four, then we can multiply them together if these two numbers are the same. And the size of the resultant matrix is uh, this multiplied by this, so two by four means we're gonna end up with a matrix with eight elements in total like that. Um, now, I don't think, again, it's terribly obvious why that's the case when it's laid out like this. However, if you lay it out in a grid, um, this does become uh, very obvious, very clear. So if we multiply it out and lay our work out in a grid method like this, um, you can see straight away that the resultant matrix will be a two by four, and that it will work because we'll have three elements combining with three elements here. So three by six plus eight times zero plus four times two, so it will work. Uh, anyway, we're not gonna go through the whole thing, but you can see, I think, that uh, it will work straight away because you have the right number matching here and it's obvious that it's going to be a two by four thing um, okay we'll just look at one more example so this is just to show one that won't work if we have a two by three multiplied by a two by three um, now by knowing the rule or we will know that if we have a, oh, a two by three 
multiplied by a two by three, then these don't match. So we're not gonna be able to multiply the matrices. However, I think if you lay it out in a grid, it just makes it obvious why that's true. So if we lay it out like this again, uh, we can see that as soon as we try to multiply this together, we're gonna to have three multiplied by two, and it isn't going to work. Three times six, a times zero, four times nothing. There's nothing there to multiply it by. So it isn't going to work. Um, so we can't multiply these together. Um, okay, just finally then, when multiplying matrices together, lay your matrices out in a grid so that you can see what you're multiplying together. It then I think becomes obvious um, that we have uh, this row multiplied by this um, column gives us this element, and then this multiplied by this will give us this element. This multiplied by this will give us this, then the second row times the first column gives us this, as they line up. This times this gives us this, and this times this gives us this. Um, you can then line it off to the side and get your final answer here. Uh, it also makes it obvious, I think, whether or not you can multiply them together. So we can see that because we're going to have two elements multiplied by another two elements here, it is going to work. And also you can see immediately what the size of the resulting matrix is, because we're going to have two by three giving us a two by three here. Okay, that's it. Cheers.